Hello, I want to uh, use a different perspective to show the um, quadratic equations and how to solve that um, so that you would be able to uh, recreate the solution in the long run without having to memorize these particular formulas. The conventional approach is you have a discriminant called delta which is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Uh, a, b, c are the parameters of the quadratic equations. And as long as delta is greater than or equal to zero, you find the solution by following these two formulas in general, meaning minus b plus or minus square root of delta over 2a. Um, over time, it would be hard to remember these without a uh, full understanding of how they are derived from. And that is the objective of this video. In order to do that, first we're going to go and look at some of the basic um, function and the derivative and the tangent line to a function, uh, the, the curve of a function. And then we go into more specific points about a particular curve line called parabola. And we go through the definition. Then we explain why the parabola is the uh, curve that is used to express a quadratic function. Um, we'll talk about the families of parabolas. And uh, that means regardless of where they are on the graph, as long as the A parameter is the same, then those parab parabolas are the same. And then we talk about the peak and the extreme of the parabola. And then we will talk about the equation to the solution. Um, in general, this is the parabola curve. And uh, in here, you have a x-axis and a y-axis. And the pink line here is called the uh, directrix. And the point F here is called the focus. The definition of a parabola in geometry is the parabola is the uh, collection of points that are uh, equal distance to a point, which is the focus, F, and a line, which is called the uh, directrix. So uh, those are in pink here. So pick any point on this black curve here as you draw a line between those points and uh, the focal point of focus F and the line pink line here. Um, make this a square angle. Then this distance here is equal to this distance. That's the definition of a parabola in the um, geometry way. Then we're going to go and um, talk about these things in details. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about function and their representation. Uh, when I talk about function here, I talk about continuous function. Uh, later on, you're going to learn more about the discontinued function which means you don't have a smooth line to represent the value. There might be some disruption somewhere. But for now, we just focus ourselves on something called continuous function. Um, a derivative is, by definition, um, what we write as derivative of x. f of x is written as f prime of x. This prime sign here represents the derivative. That is the limit of this value y2 minus y1, which is the distance here, over the distance here. And that means we got um, this value here divided by this value. And as you take that and make this distance here, which is um, we call delta of x, to be extremely small. So the way we write it is limit of this with that distance approaching zero, then that is the definition of the derivative. From a geometry point of view, what it means is 
you're going to have a line which is cut through point A and B. Now, in general, the function f of x is a curve. And that curve, basically, intercepts this line at two points, A and B. But as you make point B moving toward point A, at some point in time, the two may go inside. And that's when this line, the red line here, become the tangent line. And that means that line touches the curve at one single point. And the slope of that line is, by definition, the derivative of the function at that particular value. Now, why do we have to understand this in the context of this quadratic equation? Because as we go to um, find a peak of a curve, um, we will need to find the derivative and make that derivative to be equal to zero. The peak happens when the tangent line is lateral, meaning it is parallel to the OX axis. So when you uh, want to find a peak, you have to find the derivative, solve that derivative, uh, make it to be equal to zero, find the X value or values, and that is when a peak happens. For a quadratic equation or function, you have only one peak. But as you go into more complex function like a cubic um, function and so on, you may have multiple peaks. You may have sometimes zero peak and sometimes you may have multiple peaks. But in particular for quadratic function, you will always have one peak not zero, not two, one. Now, when we talk about a parabola, um, as I explained it, the definition of the parabola is such that the distance here, AF is equal to A to C. And if we write this function here as a value of X, and we apply the Pythagore theorem to this triangle, a, F, B, you can write this AF square equal to AB square plus FB square. It's here. And AF square is by definition equal to AC square. That's the definition of the parabola, right? The equidistant to a focus in a directrix. So that becomes AC square. FB is the value of x at that point on the curve. And AB square is, AB is equal to this minus this value, okay? So, so this distance here is y, and this distance here is equal to g. I'm not sure if I made it clear bring a different color so you can see. Because G, by definition, this peak point is also equal distance to point F and the directrix line. And I call that a quantity of G. So G is here. So this distance from here to here is Y. So the distance from here to here, which is AB, is equal to Y minus G. Now, as we expand this, we got AC square, which is Y plus G. Again, G because this is a rectangle. And then X is here, and Y minus G is here. As you um, expand on the square of this, you got Y square, G square here and here. So they uh, neutralize each other, or they cancel each other. You left with the term 2YG from here and minus 2yz from here. As you move this over here, and you move the 4g over here, then you basically have y is equal to 1 over 4g x squared. So this is the function of a parabola, a equal distance to point f and a directrix line. So it has a form of a equal y equal a times x squared. And this is a basic um, 
representation of a quadratic function. Now, um, you, you would question where is a B and there's a C. So let me talk about the family of parabolas. So these, in this particular graph, we have three fu uh, function, y0 equal ax squared, y equal ax squared plus bx plus c, and y1 equal ax squared plus b1x plus c1. Note that the same a show up in all of them. And we're going to go through a quick exercise and show you that the shape of these things are exactly the same. As long as you have the same a constant here, right, then uh, the, the shape of them are the same regardless of the value of b and c. And we call these lines all of the same family. That family is represented by ax squared. With this be the determining factor for that family. Um, quickly, if we go a distance of m, we got a value y, which is then equal n, n is a value from here to here, which is equal to ax squared, so that means am squared. Likewise, when you go to here and you find the distance here, then what you do is you evaluate this value n2, which is the delta or the difference between this value y minus this value, and this value of y is this term here. And this value of y is this term here. Um, the same formula as in this equation of this function. The only difference is we put x of 1, x1 in here, and we put x2 in here. Okay? So um, we put, as we expand that, we take ax squared, we uh, combine with ax1 squared. So we got this term, this and this go in here. This and this go in here. And the c cancel out, right? Because there's a minus here, remember. Now, uh, this is um, of the familiar uh, pattern of a, b minus a minus b, a plus b minus times a minus b. So we just uh, rewritten it like that. And this one, because x2, the distance, the delta between x2 and x1 is m, remember? We want to evaluate the, the change between here and here of the same distance as here, which is m. So we write it as m here. So we expand this one, and we got x2 is x m, x1 plus m. So x1 remain the same. The delta between x2 and x1 is m. Okay. So we go down here. We got m plus 2x1 times m. So we got am square, which is this part, 2xa plus bm. And now this is where the magic happens. This part is a zero. The reason is at the peak of the parabola, the tangent slope is zero. As you recall, we talk about the function y, and y prime is the derivative. And for now, I don't know if you have learned about derivative, but the formula for a, a general derivative of a x in the derivative of this is written as n a x n minus one. And um, I know this may bring a different concept, um, assuming you haven't seen it, um, maybe hard to understand at first, but with this understanding, uh, it is critical to understand the slope of the tangent line at the peak. And uh, so meaning the derivative would be 2 times a times x minus 1, I'm sorry, x 2 minus 1, which is 1. So we write it as 2ax plus x here it is 1. Um, so we subtract 1, it becomes 0. x to the 0 is 1. So this term, the derivative becomes b. As we said, at the peak here, when x is equal to x1, this is equal to 0 because that's the slope of the tangent line at the peak. So 2ax1 plus b is equal to 0. That's what we said. So n2 terms is 
uh, simply reduced to a m square, right? A m square, and that is the same as y. So that means the distance from here to here n two is the same distance as here and here. As long as you move out by a amount of m, you have the same change. So that tells me that every single point on this curve have the same relationship to their peak as all the points on this one. Thus, the shape of this curve would be like this. So for different value of A, you may have a line like this, you may have a line like this, or more broadly like this. But different value of A, right? A1, A2, A3. Okay, so, so in summary, these are the three curves of the same family of parabolas. The de derivative of AX2 become AX2 plus B. And when you make this derivative equal zero, that means when X is equal to minus B over 2A. That's why in this graph, this point here is at this minus b over 2a, okay? So we're gonna go and, and take a note of that and we write it down as at this point here. All right, so we continue to find the peak by substituting this value minus b 2a into this original function, we rewrite that as this, and as we expand it out, we got this, and Finally, we got y peak, meaning the value of y at the peak is equal to delta over 4a, minus delta over 4a. Now, delta is defined as b squared minus 4ac. What you note here is uh, for y to be of a opposite sign as a, then delta must always be a positive. What it means is, in this particular line here, this particular curve, this peak here is on the same side as the extreme of the parabola. When it goes to plus infinity or minus infinity, the value of y goes to plus infinity. So if the peak, the y of the peak is on, also positive, that means this line, this curve does not intersect the x axis, and therefore you don't have a solution to your quadratic solution. In this particular case, you will find that your y is at zero, meaning you touch the x axis at one point, so you have a solution in which x1 is equal to x2, equal certain value. And here is a more general solution where you have the curve intercept twice. And remember, y, the value at the peak, is of the opposite side of the extreme. The extreme here is plus infinity. In the case that you have the curve it being inverted, meaning a is a number smaller than zero, so at extreme, y always goes to minus infinity, then the peak will have to be a positive quantity for this curve to intersect this axis so that you find the solution to your quadratic equation. All right, so uh, here's a quick, hopefully interesting way to look at how the solution is obtained. The solution is or are the x value at these two points, which are equal to this center point plus minus d. So the value of x1 is minus b over 2a plus d. Sorry, let's say this is x2. x1 is the same thing, but a different value, minus d. Okay? This plus d or minus d. So for us to find the solution to the quadratic equation, which represent by this parabola intercepting this line, we will have to find d. 
And the way we find D is we use, or we apply the Pythagore theorem to this triangle, which has a size of F, D, E. So we write it this way, and we derive D square as the F square minus E square. Again, we break it down to F plus E minus F minus E. Now, F minus E, F is the distance from here to here, which is also this distance here. When F minus E, meaning this distance here, this minus this equal to this. And assuming what well, we already know, the peak here is also equal distance to point here, here, and we call this G. So the distance between this and this is 2G. And F plus E is simply 2E plus 2G. Um, so th this is how we um, uh, reasoned it out. F, F, as you know, is E plus 2G, right? F is E plus 2G. Now you add another E to that. So now F plus E will be 2E plus 2G. So you add another E to here. So that, this one. So meaning D squared is this quantity, 2E plus 2G. Uh, I take 2 out as a factor. And you get 4E plus G times G. And... Um, now we're going to go calculate G. Now it's got kind of like interesting to think about this. When we talk about this as a family, let's say that we have a different origin of coordinates and everything stays the same. I'm going to draw it in the color of green. The curve here is still a X square. We talked about that. The value here is equal to the square of this times a. So this, this is the distance equal to this. This is now a, a square. Remember, this is parallel to this, and this is equal to this because, because we say equidistance, this point is equal distance to this and the, the directrix line. So this and this are equal, meaning the rectangle becomes a square, meaning this value here, which is ax square, is equal to g. And x from here to here is the side of the square, so the side is 2g. So therefore, you plug that in and you get this and then you divide g as this and then e plus g as we said e plus g is the y of the peak and we are we already find the the peak by um the virtue of uh, us plugging that thing up here i believe we put it in here that's a peak, and we put it in as minus delta over 4a, okay? So, um, so now we go back to this, d squared equal to 4e plus g times g. 4e plus g is, this is the y of the peak, and this is, g is this. So you can buy that out, you will find d squared equal to Delta over 4a square, assuming delta equal or greater than zero, then d would be equal to square root of delta over 2a. And as we get back to this, we say the solution is minus b over 2a plus d or minus d. So here are the solution of the square, um, the quadratic equation. And this is the graphical interpretation of how you can come up and solve the solution again. 
um, years from now. Hopefully you have understood this. If you have any question, please leave me a note. Thank you for watching so far.